Good morning, everybody. It is the 9th of January. Happy New Year. I know I said it on uh, Monday, but that's right. Can't say it enough. Um, it's Thursday, which means I have IB later today, so we won't be going tremendously long. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I have a little bit of a cough because we ate uh, Japanese last night, and I can I can't always guess what they have in the food. Um, so they might have slipped a little bit of MSG or weed in there. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, uh, let's see. Admin. Um, there are some people in this group. Uh, most of you know who you are. That uh, we're, are going to get an invitation at the end of the week. To be the first to go through the brand new market geometry site, and uh, I don't even care if it's just one or two walkthroughs, because we'll be, put, we'll be putting four or five groups through. But walk through, just see if some buttons work, see if you like the look and feel. Should be a hell of a lot easier to use. Um, like I said, the new form won't be there for two months, but um, there'll be separate spots for mark for uh, breakfast separate spots for evening um, it's not sure whether or not uh, it's not, it's unclear whether or not we can link your membership subscription status for breakfast and evening and mentoring directly to your account like we do with the regular premium or whether that will screw up the database again if it does then we'll just continue to just do it manually but lots of cool things coming and um, and they're coming quick now how is it going collect collecting the trading sheets uh i don't know maybe I, i'm a little i'm a little disappointed al maybe at 10 i'd like more yeah i thought i would think more people let me just tell you i get paid uh six figures to look over <laughs> to look over hedge fund guys numbers and uh this is a once in a lifetime opportunity this, we're not going to do this forever but I wanted to take a shot at like 40 or 50 people from market geometry and uh, just get a real snapshot of where we are and the one thing I'm not getting very much Al is um, I'm getting some people that are standing up but most of them are relatively new and they're not keeping um, I got a couple but they're not keeping uh, track of what their stop loss was and what their profit target was so you know I don't really know the intent of what they were trying to do and uh, I, I can't go back and interview them on each trade <clears throat> chances are they didn't keep notes that well so it's unfortunate but we'll see hopefully uh, you know some latecomers will head in uh, I can't do it till the end of the month anyway or start it so it's not it's not something that'll, that'll take a week to do it'll take some time to do so because we have some other things coming up first of all we have to move the web the website over that's going to be a big undertaking in times of in terms of hey tim is this okay hey tim is this if we do the buttons this way you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, not big heavy work but just lots of have to pay attention when it happens uh would you take a year that is not oh yeah i don't care how long it is yeah i took somebody sent me three months that had good notes that was great I don't care doesn't matter see it's same thing as uh, it doesn't matter if it's 20 trades or 200 trades or actually 2,000 trades doesn't matter <clears throat> we're just you know in the end it'll just go in sample to so even with the 10 we're probably at uh, I don't know eight or six eight or nine thousand vote eight or nine thousand trades well not with the 10 but with what we have, we're probably at 8,000 8, trades, maybe. So we're starting to get a snapshot, but um, anything we can add to that popper would be good. And uh, if we can look at some individual ones as well that ha also have their ideas or their intent. Uh, somebody uh, gave me their OneNote, access to their OneNote yesterday, which had beautiful notes. That'll help. That'll make a big difference. <clears throat> and they, they haven't been here for a year, but they've been here most of a year, so that'll be a good interest. So, you know. We just have a few of those that will help. 
So we'll just see what people do. I mean, I get it. Some people feel a little strange about it. It's okay. No problem. Um, so new websites coming. Um, I beat today. Uh, for those of you in the evening, Boy, I can see, uh, I can see how these guys like Warren Buffett and Stocks now make just rape and pillage. And uh, we'll go over that in the next evening session. We had one last night, but I, afterwards, I had a, I had a phone call conversation with some, with a company that is going to go private because of me. And uh, because of that, I'm, I guess I'm going to end up getting a sweetener. But it's like. I didn't realize that people like Warren Buffett have people to do nothing to go around, but go around to companies and try and talk them into going private so that they can get the sweetener for being the first part of the IPO. And I, I don't even want this, but they're going to give it to somebody, so they're going to give it to me. I'm just going to give it to my investors. But uh, it's like, uh, you guys are incredible crooks. I just, I think this is so wrong. But uh, anyway, so we'll have fun with that when I can talk about it. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little about it next time around. I'll tell you who it's going to be, what it is, and then and then there'll be a blackout period, and then because they they won't be out for six to nine months anyway. Excuse me, I have to fix my headphones, and then uh, and then it'll be fun to watch the uh, this. Now this is an IPO that I will participate in, and I will actually buy some stock for my kids after trades because. Uh, these, these these people are winners. They run a lean, mean ship, and they got up. They get it. They get what the world looks like in 20 years. Anyway, today I thought uh, I'd go further on with. Um, we we touched on this Monday, which is uh, it's the beginning of the year. How do you start off a new year? How many guys, how many people have not traded yet this year? Okay, are you, are you looking at the markets? Ah, BJ's just on vacation. I'm relaxing. Taking my time, okay. Ah, uh, just back yesterday from vacation, okay. Um, I tried to elude a little bit, looking but no trades. Okay, uh, that's what Shane said to me. But I think his mind's a little bit off the ball as well. Um, um, I wondered a little bit because um, you know I did trade for my own account, but you know for the fund I was done. Um, at the end of October. No, we had, oh, big big project in a warehouse until Sunday night. Okay. Got it. Well, it's okay. You're done now, BJ. So, BJ and Pat, so now you can take your time and get back in a step. Don't worry about it. You, did, you know what? You didn't miss. It wasn't a sterling period to trade. So, if you had to miss a period, uh, by all intents, I mean, I missed a bunch of it as well. Um, by all accounts, you didn't miss that much. So this was not one of those holidays. Some holiday seasons are just like filled with presents, and this one was just kind of, eh, a lot of work and not not that much money for it. And when I was looking, and I'm looking at my peers' numbers coming in for December. Um, nobody made or lost their year in December. Nobody. So. Uh, me not trading was actually probably a good thing. So, you know, less less wear and tear. Um, and I was sick anyway, so allowed me to get better. And, um, but see, then the thing is that I was alluding to, if you're coming off a bad year, you're coming off a good year. And you haven't traded for a little bit. How do you get started? What do you do? You thought about that? You just jump in and whatever happens, happens.
um, you know, if you if you're like me and you had had a record year, last January happened so fast, I never really had a chance to think about it. Um, this year, I was I had this whole thing going on with the dance with the Queen about whether or not I would run her finances and the finances of the royal family. Um, and my wife and kids thought that we were moving to England, and that turned into a fight. And I had no intention of moving, but I had to get that over with with her. Um, and then uh, it came down to, you know, I'll do it, but from here, period. And so we finally made that decision. And um, so then the question is, do I keep trading? She said to me, I don't care. If you, if you want to stop trading, you can stop trading. It's more important for me that I have somebody I can trust making decisions. And uh, I don't want to quit trading. <laughs> this is what I do. I mean, I can help her make intelligent decisions, but I'm, you know, much, much better at trading than anything. So uh, then it was, okay, I got all this nailed down and in place. Got to go back to work at some point. So I finally felt healthy enough, and we got our last vacation on Louis in Tucson. Then it's, uh, okay, what, are, what do I want to do? So I just kind of wanted to plant that seed on Monday. I don't know if that if that worked very well, if people got the idea, but that's, um, that's what you're going to see today. First shot at the market. And, uh, and what I'm looking for, okay? Ready to go to work? Okay, and, and what I am looking for is, if you think back to last year, we talked about it. Um, when I when I have been away from the market, I want the market to do some logical things. Um, I'm going to clean my glasses so I say this. I don't know what the heck I did. I want the market to do some logical things. I want it to give me some confidence that I'm actually reading the market um, and not just saying and not just you know snatching it uh, oh it's moving up let me get long it's moving down let me get short or it's moving down let me try and find a bottom it's moving up let me try and find a top I want to actually see some things and have them play out um, in a style that reminds me of what I like when I trade one second So, I don't trade just to trade. And in fact, if I catch myself trading just to trade, and, and I got to tell you, a lot of you guys trade just to trade. And I know it's a, it's hard. I mean, you know, you get dragged into the market. But I don't trade just to trade. So, I mean, things really have to, add, you know, it has to go do re mi fa so for me to even get interested. I, I just, I'm just like that. I'm very, I'm patient probably to a fault at this point and so uh, so I went looking and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a few specific things and as they unfold we'll we'll see if we can identify them okay and um, those are kind of kind of it's like it's like comfort food or a comfort zone that says okay I know what this is this is this is what I like to see before I put my money on the line so I looked at a couple markets and uh, for whatever reason, one that looked interesting to me was uh, Canada. And you guys wanted to keep it simple, so 20-minute Canada. Anybody looking at Canada or looked at Canada recently? Or am I alone? Yes, missed the entry. Oh, which entry? Okay, lot. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if you like this. So, going into the year end, we had this nice, big, fat sell-off. And then the last day, um, sometimes on the last day, there's a big rush. But it uh, turned out to be a nothing. Which is fine. I wasn't watching this live anyway. 
this is me driving Formula One cars in Tucson. This is me driving home. So it's not like I was watching it. And uh, now I'm just drawing it. I'm, oh, okay. Big sell-off. Ho-hum. Coming into the end of the year. And people are just squaring up. And you can see we leave a nice little multi-pivot line. It's fine. It's not unusual. And start to sell off. And it's right, it's right at the end of the year. And that is the end of the year. And that is the opening of 2014. Um, and there's nothing more to draw. <laughs> Especially when it does that. It does nothing. So, you know, we're, we're waiting for people to wake up and you know, sometimes, actually, here's a tip for you. Sometimes I actually go through and just clip these bars out. It's up to you. It's hard to tell if these are real or not. The um, thing about cash for an exchange is sometimes you get uh, ghost updates on holidays. You'll see like 10, 20-minute bars in a row that are all the same price. It's not that it's trading there. It's that some nitwits machine is automatically inputting a price. And uh, uh, eSignal doesn't clean it out. You can clean it out if you want or you can leave it. It's up to you. I just left. I just didn't bother. So let's see uh, where we go from here. So now, now we're actually trading. So this is really the beginning of trading in 2014. So let's look at the time. <clears throat> I don't know that it matters. Noon on noon on uh, Wednesday. So we start to head a little bit higher. Triple tops. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a quadruple tops, but uh, you know, boy, it looks awful thin, doesn't it? And. Uh, I don't know what that is. Wide range of our closes on the top or a bad piece of data. But you've heard me say this before. You got what you got. You trade the data you got, right? So. And there's there's nothing here that makes me want to trade yet. How about you guys? I marked the year-end low, but there's just nothing going on. It's just kind of nothing. And uh, that, I mean, this just tell me tells me there's probably almost nothing going through. It's 4 o'clock on uh, New Year's Day in the afternoon, Chicago time, and... Uh, there's probably nobody in America that's, you know, doesn't have a hangover. Uh, there's probably a couple people that had to come in and make prices for customers, but it's really the uh, New Zealanders and Australia guys, and even they don't want to trade. So what he, and you can look at look at the volatility. Just ugly bars. All right, so now we start to float up a little bit. And um, I just grabbed that. I don't know why it's caught my eye. This caught my eye. It didn't go anywhere. This caught my eye. Marked it. We'll see. I can see bits of this elsewhere, so I left it on there. Triple bottoms. Price is widening out a little bit. Starting to head back down. Okay, now we've got a nice little multi-pivot line that goes all the way back to 2013. It's a, it's a year old. Ooh. So in a certain sense, we've got flat bottoms and some expanding tops, but we don't know if that means anything at this point. And the 
bars are wide. And I don't know about you, I'm not interested in, in chasing this stuff. I don't see this as an opportunity. Trading here with a stop just didn't interest me at all. But the fact that multi pivot multi is a year old, what does that make you think? Nothing. <laughs> I just I just made a joke. I just, you know, if there's any if there's any horizontal frequency, that's it. I don't know that it there is or isn't. I don't know. So, all right. I mean, you you might wonder. Hadn't thought of this, but let's do this. My eyes are just, I think maybe, maybe are kind of waking up a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe. A happy New Year wash. Welcome to 2014. could be and if it is what's important is not the wash but how it deals with it down here that was quite a strong move up but see we don't know that it was three people buying three contract you know three hundred thousand dollars we really don't it's the second of Jan January we don't really know it was a big it was you know and the other thing is it's actually only 35 pips John it looks huge We just don't know. So this one really didn't float my boat. But I'm curious. Wash maybe? Don't know. I mean, that bar makes this look like a wash. Let's see. Coming back to the multi-pivot line. Testing the multi-pivot line. Right back up. Huh. So we've got a flat bottom and we've got expanding tops. Think there's buyers in the market, John? I think so, okay. Anybody else got an opinion? Not sure is fine. No opinion yet is fine. No new highs, okay. I mean, really, yeah, we're still in the in the soup, but people are fist fighting for, you know, they're some of them are back from vacation, and just like me, they're looking for their first trade, right? It's uh, it's 2014 for them too. At some point, you gotta might be the second week. Some people wait till the second. I, you know, a lot of years I wait for the second week of January to even turn the machines on. Just depends on what's going on. So this frequency wasn't awful so far. Trying to get above it. Okay, when we're up here, what are the positions? Flat bottoms, expanding tops, what are the positions? Even if there's only a few positions, what are they? I doubt there are many people fighting it. So yeah, they're probably long. So as I watch this, I guess today is more about the journey going on in my mind than the trade per se. So that's actually what uh, IB is going to be about as well. Um, as I watch this, I now have two things. I have one thing that's working out for me in terms of logic and that's this little bit of frequency I do this little bit of frequency and so far it's holding up pretty good so that's the first thing that makes me feel interesting 
interested. The second thing is, um, as we're up here, at this bar, I, I did, let me, ah. Let me slide this over because I, I wanted this to pop here. This is where I was thinking about it. Okay. And I thought, you know, take a look at them. They keep going to the well. What are the positions? People aren't short. In fact, these people are probably buying more down here. And then it pops up here when other people buy, and they're buying more down here. And it pops up here as more people get it, right? But I don't, I don't see any urgency to run away from the long positions. Does anybody see that? Come on, there's... 17 of you here. Wake up. So as we get up here, my sec the second piece of logic comes into mind. And and what do you think that is? The first piece of logic is I got a piece of frequency and it's showing me where we should run out of energy. What's the second piece of logic? You guys must have stayed out late last night and drank. Come on. It's reaction? No. Let's see what they're made of. Okay. Well, how about, yeah, it's kind of it. How about this is, what are the positions? I think everybody's long, if they're anything. They're either still hung over and they don't want to play, and they're being forced to sit in a corporate desk, you know, or they're long. If they, if they're, if they want to trade, they're probably long. If they want to trade Canada, it's pretty hard to be short. If you're short, you're not making money, are you? If everyone is long, you would expect price to zoom there. The freak, uh, I'm sorry. Hang on. Look for a washout at the bottom. Hang on. Al says, if everyone is long, you would expect price to zoom the frequency. You mean the upside? Al? Um, no. I think this frequency line, this is my first piece of logic, is we cannot get above this first p this frequency and you can see even though we have on the upside expanding pivots they're running out at the same frequency it's a sine wave right so i picked out the right frequency so that makes me feel good then it comes to me well if they're unable to break these this frequency to the upside and they're all long what does that mean so what does it mean guys they're trying 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 and in a certain sense we've got here, let's do this why you why you write I mean, it's a little bit contrived, but it is the same thing. Yeah, it's a little bigger than I wanted, but... Ah. You know, they ran down. Now they got one run up, two runs up, three runs up. Oh, there's conviction. Each one's in higher high.
but it's not accelerating. Think of it that way. The way I would say no conviction is if, if, if we were down here banging on the bottom, but we weren't making any upside progress, I would call that no conviction. Breakout traders are not getting paid. Well, on this bar, they feel like they're getting paid. How about that? But on this bar, of course, they don't feel like they're getting paid. So depends on the exact moment where you're at. Rebecca says, expect a probable wash if they're long. Yeah, a pullback and a wash. Huh? So I'm thinking everybody's long, and I'm well, I'm with Rebecca 100%. If everybody's long, the next thing I expect is what? I expect some people to follow through? No, if everybody's long, I expect some people to get hurt. It's not even manipulation. I don't even think this market is that, um, is that awake, John. This market's going to collapse of its own weight. They're going to feed on each other. Because this is a market of, uh, you know, when I used to trade the Belgian francs, there were only five market makers. It's like chess. If you look around at the other four market makers and you realize that all five of you along, the first person that turns makes all the money. Right? One second. Okay, I don't know how I can do this over and over again, but I've done it again. Just one second. <sighs> if you had a video of this, you'd laugh. Just one second. I'll tell you what I was, what's going on. Yeah, it's a, it's a rush for the door. Um, I have these uh, little things holding my glasses onto my head in case they're knocked off to my head, you know, little like librarians wear, which are going to go away at the end of the day today <laughs> because um, they get they keep getting tangled up in my headphone, so in my microphone headphone. So anyway, you know, if this doesn't accelerate to the upside, it's going to accelerate to the downside. So now I've got three pieces of logic here. This is where price should run out of energy, and it is. Ding, 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 ding. I think everybody's long. Well, if everybody's long, I probably should expect that there's going to be a flush here, and it might be because this market is, is thin, might be pretty damn ugly. What do you think about that for a set of logic, for a one, two, three set piece of logic? Well, I don't know if it's right on, but <clears throat> actually for the 2nd of January, I thought it was pretty clear. <clears throat> but we'll see if it follows through. Now, I'm not going to, if th that doesn't happen, I'm going to stop looking at this market immediately. This seems so clear to me, so crystal clear to me, as I was watching this, that with two not breaking, then that's good logic. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll set some rules out for three drives because we actually are, are, are going to now publish that book. We now found out that we have the rights to publish it. Anyway, um, and it's not groundbreaking or anything. It's just a simple way. It's the, the original three drives to the top, three drives to the bottom that the farmers, the little piggy farmers put together in the 30s. It's a cool little book. Um, and we're going to give the, we're going to give the, uh, give the money to charity but it's out of it's out of print so um, and it shouldn't be it's one of those little gems it's not a million pages long or anything <coughs> there's no deep deep thinking in it. it's the guys literally that sure of course you can have first pickings yeah in fact you know I can't get any of them to sign it they're all dead unfortunately but I'll sign it <laughs> and uh, you know I'll sign it to the breakfast group I don't care and um it's uh, it's one of those little pieces. Like I said, these guys used to sit in a diner in Nebraska. There were five or six of them once a week and look at their charts, their hand charts, and go, what do you think about this? I don't know. I think it's time to hedge? Not so sure, John. What do you think? Well, I was thinking that maybe we could get 43 bucks ahead. Well, let's take a look.
And then, you know, one day they went, haven't we seen this before? And they pulled out their, you know, my, sorry about my, my accent. I'm not, I'm not exactly a good actor, but you know, they pulled out their charts, you know, their whole package of charts and they were looking through and they said, you know, check this out. So anyway, um, they put together this small little treatise on a couple, a couple pieces. I should do an audio book. I should get an actor to do an audio book, not me. Uh, you know who I should get is, uh, what's that guy's name? Ah, oh, crap, he's a Clinton supporter. Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> Somebody like that. Somebody, you know, a good redneck, not me. Actually, a couple of my, neck, uh, my neighbors are good old boys and are good friends and are about my age, and they're, and they're pretty funny. In fact, Joey, my, my trainer at CrossFit, is a good old boy from Texas and then Kentucky, and now, and now he runs the tea party in Prescott, Arizona, and he's a hell of a redneck voice, so I could use him. Anyway, so, <laughs> so we're pulling off, as you'll see. And, uh, you know, at this point, as a whale, I'm pretty sure I have this nailed. Now, I'm not looking to go long. Let's follow the logic. I expect energy. We should run out of energy here. At this point, it dawns on me that everybody's long. I haven't marked ML2, or, I, or you'd see it, Big Sean. Um, I'm not looking to go short. I'm looking to collect logic. Okay? I'm looking to read the market. The only thing I see significant right now, Igshan, is this low. This high might be significant, but I don't know if it is yet. Okay? I just don't know. What I do know, though, is I know the logic that set this up. And with a couple bars at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that they're going to wash these longs out of the market. It's not going to be me. That's a, it's the lowest low I have on the board. That's all. Now, if they're going to wash these lows out, what's their job? To answer your question, Al. Well, and what would that entail? To answer your question. Take it piece by piece. Come on. Take this low out. That's right. This is the significant low. Well, if they're going to wash these guys out to make sure that these guys are out of the market, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to take this low out. Otherwise, they're just not sure, right? Does everybody follow the logic? That's literally what I'm thinking at this point. This is where I say the risk is to the downside, yes. Now, in a normal market, I might be the guy trying to push, but I, you know, I'm, I'm not that awake, and this is my first trade of the year. I'm not trying to flex my muscles. I'm trying to flex my brain. This is my this is my brain on drugs. You remember that commercial? Anyway, I'm just trying to make sure that you know all the neurons are firing and everything. And when I see the second bar, I go, okay, this is making sense. This could make sense. I could see this. I could see them taking out this multi pivot line and blowing this bottom out. Then the question is, then what? So let's make the let's make the assumption that they push lower and they get to this multi pivot. Then what? Give me some possibilities. I'm going to let you think in advance. What are the possibilities? Break the lows? Sure. Have a wash, says Petra. Okay. Buyers step up. Either new lows or get the longs to chase the market higher again. Okay. What if we run, what if we make new lows? Is it going lower? You mean, do you mean support, Perry? How far before support? 
John says it might break and fall apart. Perry says, how far before we find buyers? Uh, and hang on. Petrus, Petrus answers the question. Maybe that's where we find the wash, right? Wash at sea of a new pitchfork. Look for long if the low taken out and the markets start to move long. There you go, Bob. Follow it? I don't know about the ABC's part of it, but I think that's the that's the gist of it is that if we can get a wash and and they don't push the market over on themselves and, and then crush themselves on the way and it keeps moving down. But if you can get some violence going here and get people shagged out of their longs and then the market stops and turns around, then you might have something going here. Because all these people that means that all these people, let's think about this for a second, all these people, their first trades of the year just turned to shit. <laughs> Pardon my language. We know we know what happened to their first trade of the year, don't we? Loser. If we make a new low, a new low, right? Market is still fairly narrow, sure. Profit potential may not be big enough to play, have to watch and evaluate. Absolutely true. And it's also not only narrow, meaning not, not, a, not a huge range, but it's also thin, which could either work to our advantage or work against us. So all those things are in the back of my mind. But the very first thing I want to see is some logic. Now I've gotten a couple pieces of logic. When these two bars kick in, I go, okay, I got the frequency right. Um, this tells me I think that everybody's long when three didn't get taken out. And when we start to print lower, I go, boy, if we get any follow through to the downside, I got three pieces of logic in a row. If this sell off turns out to be a wash, I think I'm cooking with gas, as my dad would say. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to engineer it, but I know what I'm willing to engineer okay with me or not anybody lost ask now before we unroll the, the bars if you don't understand what I'm talking about ask me now okay let me ask you a question is this simple enough for you because people wanted simple you know you know cash foreign exchange simple stuff this is okay all right okay I'm I'm liking this better and better and better I can feel these people going god damn it my first trade of the year is gonna be a loser because my stops gonna be right you know these guys you know where their stop is right here or maybe on, I don't know, who knows if it's under here or under here. But it, you know what I mean? I mean they, they, don't, they don't even have the right stop under here. They're, they've got a tight stop because it's their first trade of the year, right? And they got their hands caught in the cookie jar because some of them were chases, chasing up here. So they're trying to hold on because they don't want to start the year at the loss. So they're probably overextended. But look at the bars. Look at the bars. And I know we didn't make much of a new low, but that bar has uh-oh written all over it. That bar has look out below. Now the question, though, is, is this the start of a downtrend? Um... Yeah, I mean, you know, I you could do one, two, three, three drives. Thinking ahead, this looks like a large shallow bottom is being put in. Current low expected to be taken out as A may spawn a significant move to some previous high not shown on the chart to the left. Okay. I think that's 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 good thinking. Let's go to let's go miniature. You could go one, two, three lows 
we've pounded on this this will be the third time okay the third drive up here held if the third drive here to the bottom holds then we got problems then we're back to which one is going to break but if it doesn't hold and we blow right through then this drive is the one that works okay so that's that's how generally three drives to the top and bottom when you become good at them you actually have a set on top and a set below and you can put a baseline in and you know which one once one breaks you know which one's in charge okay it's not for the meek they're picking at it like I said the, nobody wants to start there with the loss so especially the the either traders with a lot of money or institutional traders are hanging on by their fingernails they probably are have a little bit more at risk than they want but they don't want to take the loss because it's the first trade of the year and then I want to start out with the loser and I think their year is going to be I think their year is going to start out with the loser what do you think I'm feeling better about the logic Just look people like people being pushed off the cliff. Now again, yeah, they're puking. I I guess maybe there was a short here, but you know I certainly wasn't interested and I didn't have enough logic. And this is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. You don't have to trade every idea that you have. You don't have to trade every time the market moves. A lot of times this idea will lead into the next idea which will lead into the trade you see what I'm saying you string them together until you say okay now I see what I want now if X happens I'll trade but you know a short idea may lead to the long idea etc etc it's like Rube Goldberg you're, you're building a device here Let's look at the next bar. Well, that certainly looks like if you were long, you're no longer long. What do you think? I, I don't think I don't care I don't care what they were doing at this point, I think. Uh yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I don't know how much of it's panic as much as it is you know normally they got a 25 pip stop loss but you know what I'm willing to go to 35 because I don't want to take a loss at the beginning of the year well it's 45 to health that I give up it's I give up the next bar will tell us whether it's panic selling if the next bar is this big and lower and down as well as much and you know we're down at 105 40 then we got panic selling Shane Right now we got, well, we've got an expanding pivot, but we're about to find out whether or not this is going to be a runaway market or, you know, we just push people off, people off the cliff. So let's, let's look. Well, there you go. So that's some good old-fashioned pain, ain't it? And nothing makes my, nothing makes me more hungry to trade than some good old-fashioned pain so let's do this now I didn't play this game what are the positions well I'd say three hurt <laughs> out and some are short right hurt out and short and there's probably there's probably one guy it's Canada it's probably my buddy at the Royal Bank of Canada he's probably trading at home from his bathroom smoking cigarettes <laughs> uh, I sent him a case of beer for Christmas
and I sent him a uh, certificate for an e-cigarette. You know what those are? They're not really cigarettes, but you know, <laughs> they're not really cigarettes, but they're electronic, and you know, they they smoke, and and some of them even have caffeine. Yeah, the next big thing, I don't think so. But <laughs> anyway, he sent it back, and he and he wrote on it in uh, in uh, Sharpie. Ha ha ha. Just sent it right back. And it's funny, when I opened the envelope, you could smell the cigarette smoke coming out of the envelope. He's not buying any e-cigarette. Uh, but he appreci appreciated the beer, he said. So that was that was funny. I just give him a hard time. I don't have, You know what? I don't have that many friends left in the market, so I had to give him a hard time. The Greybeards, Michael and I were talking about him. We both know him real well. And we decided, we're trying to figure out what to sell him, just to give him a jab. And uh, that came to mind. So anyway. All right, so now we have, uh, well, let me ask you, what do we have? Potential wash, potential to flower, that's good, I thought. Possible wash, thought. I was just thinking mirror bars, right? Good old-fashioned mirror bars. So now, we're either going to run or we're going to turn. So check your risk. Because the route's on or the turn's about to, you know, about to happen, one or the other. So you better... If you're short, you better be thinking about protecting your profits. And if you're, if you're thinking about anything else, you better be expecting some movement. we got mirror bars going on here. So we've had the good old-fashioned pain. Nothing I like better than that. And when that happens, we actually make a new low. And then we, so this is an engulfing bar. We take out the mirror bars. Boy, that, I think that's a happy New Year wash, don't you? Good morning, Vietnam. Now, these people are still reeling. They don't get it. Because they saw the new low. They're, they're not seeing the clothes like Bob is. I'm like you, Bob. I'm seeing the clothes and saying, uh, ooh, somebody did a good job. This is a nice wash. Wish it had been me. Eighty pip wash, pretty nice. Wish it had been me. But these people don't get yet that they've been washed. Do y'all see that? Or are you not sure? I'll tell I'll show you when they know. If you if you don't know, I know Rebecca knows. She's seen enough of them. Watch. Now they get it. In fact, let's write that. One more time. Let's write that. I said. Sucks to be them. Whoops. Would you get long on the boom boom bar? No. I'm not. Well, I might have later in the year, Rebecca. I might have, you know, when I was playing Gold World and really on top of my game. I'm, I'm rubbing the sleep out of my eyes. I'm actually feeling pretty good about myself right here, Rebecca, but... I w uh, yeah, I mean, I wish I would have gotten along right here. Or right here. How about that? When I saw this close, I should have been getting along right here. But, yeah, would I? Yeah. Did I? No. Didn't, uh, wasn't fast enough. But I, wa I, I will say, Rebecca, as we started to take out this high, 
I was actually having, I was sitting in my chair right here, I was actually having a good chuckle. Saying, you know what, <laughs> that was a damn good wash. I was actually enjoying it. Which, maybe that's cruel, but... How about you, Rebecca? You're starting to see enough of them now. Can you imagine you're going to start seeing them fast enough that you'd be able to jump in? Yeah. Nice stop. So, start looking for them and take some small positions. Give them a try because I'll tell you what, if you can, if you can see them, we got a lot of money on them real quick. All right. So, anybody got a sense of, you know, if you're not looking ahead on a chart in front of you right now, or if you don't remember the chart perfectly, you got a real sense of where we're going yet? The next bar, the next two bars. flush out the chaser. So that's a good guess, Rebecca. I like that idea. So Rebecca says, you know, maybe we got to go take out the guys that, are, that have decided to get long. That's a, that's a, you're a cruel woman. It's a good thought. Anybody else? Retest and then go higher. Yep. I, that's kind of what Rebecca said, you know, pull back to, to get out the people that are just along for the ride and then take it higher. Anybody want to trade? Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not ready yet either, but I just want to know if you guys are I'm gonna mark this ahead. This is becoming an this may be an important low. Let's see. It feels a little fast for me. Oh, okay. And especially on January second it feels a little fast. Before going further, where do you think the retest will happen? Well, if it's perfect it'll happen right in here. Plus or minus five pips right in here. May not get below the multi pivot line. A lot of it depends, Ixan, on how many people chased the long and went, oh crap, I got chased, I got stopped out long, let me get long, and they get long up in here. Depends on, and this market may not be deep enough that people are, are doing that. We'll see. It's a, it's a, it's a factor of how many people are chasing the market. And one of the things we're going to have to figure out here is how many people are are trading, how many people are chasing the market. Don't know. Consolidation. Okay. Well, Rebecca, if nobody, I mean, if there's only five or ten traders, okay, and these guys all got short or all got long and then got spanked, and this guy pulls it out of the hole and he buys, he takes every offer there is. The only thing that's going to happen is he's going to take everybody that was long, get them out. He's going to get long and he's going to take a few people out that have left orders up here to sell. And now it becomes a standoff. But if instead everybody that was long says, oh, crap, you know what? This was a wash and rinse. And they all jump on and get long all the way up to here. If he's smart, he'll push it back down again and buy it again right here. Until he's sure that they've basically, and he squeezed every dollar out of them that he can, right? It's like, is your wallet empty yet?
I'm not smart enough to know this. Is January 2nd, is that a, is that a uh, college football uh, bowl day? Probably, huh? There's probably people that, you know, have to trade, but really they just want to watch the, te you know, college football on TV or whatever. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know. I don't watch TV anymore. I, I read books on Kindle and stuff like that. It's the excitement of my life. I play trumpet now again. That's fun. So now we're getting consolidation. So now we we're not we're not sure what's going to happen. So now what I, what what I'm thinking is everybody was long. Beautiful violence to the downside. Everybody that was long is gone. And they've had a loss. Their first trade for the year is a loss. So, you know, they're not going to be, what's the right word, you know, pr particularly excited. Somebody have an internet connection problems, by the way? Somebody keeps popping in and out. Um, they're not going to be particularly excited about jumping back in. You are, John? Okay. I'm keeping track. I'll go to webinar again. Um, so... My next question is, I actually have, I've got a germ of an idea. But I don't know how it's going to unfold yet. All right, so I think my logic circuits are working pretty good here. And I think I have a fairly good idea of how this market's going to unfold. But I'm not really sure how it's going to unfold yet because I don't have, a, I don't have enough, I don't have a good read about how many people are playing and how deep this market is and you know what the reactions are like do you can you guys follow me what do you think what do you think my what what do you think what, what how do i say this i have an idea what do you think my idea is There is a place to get long. That's what I'm thinking, Ixshan. Exactly right. I don't know where yet, though. Uh. Okay. Yeah, I could draw the obvious one, but I don't know that these are significant. I'll, I'll draw it for you. I don't know that that's significant yet. All because this is just this is knee jerk reaction, Kareem. I want to see a median line off of trading. But you can draw it, sure. You can always erase them. Let's leave that in. What else could I do? Why am I leaning long? Because I saw everybody trying to get long, and I saw them just get flushed out, and somebody picked up all of this slack and got the market right back up here. So the market's back up to the same area, and there's only one long, literally. That's how thin I think this market is. But there's a lot of people that wanted to be long. They're not long, and yet the market's right back up here. Now, at some point, they're going to try and get long. So I think the market has a propensity to move up from here. That's all. The, the wash, because the wash stalled, because it turned into a wash, and it was so violent, that makes me lean to the long side. The good old-fashioned pain. I got to, yeah, John's right. I got to wait for my opportunity. I got to see some bars. I don't. I don't get that part of the logic, and I'm not going to trade until I do. And if I miss the trade, okay, I'm not going to impulse trade. And we saw when we went through stuff on Monday and a couple weeks ago what impulse trading looks like. I'm not going to impulse trade. I'm going to wait for the logic to unfold. And if I miss the trade because the logic 
isn't clear enough for me, that's okay. That's just an opportunity loss. But one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to chase a market. Just because I think it, there's a long here, it doesn't mean I'm going to get long here. Or at, at new highs or whatever. So if price crawled back slowly, then you would not be looking to get long. Uh, if price crawled back slowly. You mean the upside or the downside? Which way, Shane? What are you talking about? Be more descriptive. <clears throat> what do you think I need? Let me, let me turn it on its head. It's the violence and the move back up that has you looking for long. That's true. Now, what do you think I need to see for me to understand if I want to get long and how to get long? What do you think I need to see? If you're me. Maybe you don't need to see it, but I do. Some sort of a retest at holds, okay. Should the bottom of the wash be confirmed with a higher high, we start hunting for B. Oh, okay, I like that, Lewis. How you doing, Lewis? Um, I got to see some buyers, not a buyer. I've got a buyer. Okay, I had some buyers, and they were wrong, and they, got one, they have a losing loss. They have a losing trade for the year. So I'm not interested in these guys. I need to see some serious buyers. And it's not this guy. He's already long, and he's already duped the market. He's not going to press up here. I need to know that there are some people that have to buy this market. Otherwise, this market is not going to continue higher. So I need to see some buyers. I also need to know that there's an area where people are going to step up to buy on the downside, right? I need to know that there's going to be some orders below to protect me. Does that make sense? Can you please expand on what you said about when a wash stalls? Well, okay, you're going to... I'm not listening to myself, so you have to remind me. Do you mean to the downside or the upside, Rebecca? What was I saying? Well, my impression right now is that there are not many buyers. Well, my impression, my impression right now is, okay, the downwash. Okay. This is engineered to wash out these people, and that's all this is. Okay. I don't think, I think you can count the number of players in the world right now on two hands. Literally. I'm not talking about the junkie one lot traders. I'm talking about, you know, people that are have to go in this have to go in the office and have to sit down and have to trade. I mean, unfortunately there are people and I used to be one of them. And I did it cuz I was the boss and I didn't want my people that were hung over to come in and trade. So I went in and trade cuz I I haven't I haven't had beers, you know, multiple beers since 1984. So I don't get hangovers. You know, I don't have party problems. I, I just can't do that anymore. So I would I would be the one that got up on the second and was in the office because I know everybody else was dealing with what what happened on the 31st and the 1st. So there's only a handful of people trading here, okay? There were a lot of people trying to get out of that group. A lot of people tried to get long. And when it failed on the third time, it was pretty easy to engineer the puke. And the, the clue is right there that that's a wash. And it's a beautiful wash. That's a beautiful, ugly, violent wash. They doubled the. Think about it this way, Rebecca. They doubled the. He doubled the volume to the downside. Doubled the range to the downside, and then yeah, the boom boom bar, and then pulled the string on him, right? And if you had, you know, if you were a brainiac at all, you'd be buying right here. And then it was gone. 
and this is where the light goes on to all these guys oh man I hit it right my money is gone and now they don't want to play right do you think they want two losers in a row because again most of these people are professional traders they may not be using the real wash but they know what just happened they had their pockets were picked and they don't really want to start out the year that way because they were also probably as I said using stops a little bit bigger than they should have anyway trying to hold on and then and he pushed it over the cliff now he's made sure that none of them are in the market so the markets he's got the market all to himself at this point so I need to see fresh buyers not him and I need to see buyers below not him otherwise it's going to be a chess game between him and me and he looks like he's in pretty good shape doesn't he and he's also got a nice war chest already for the beginning of the year going he's got you know a nice winning trade or two going and he's in control of the market I don't really want to play a chess game with this guy not right now not my first trade of the year follow me I I, I want some other people that are reliable to trade that means people that are willing to buy to the upside and people that are willing to leave orders down below to buy because I'm interested in the in being long just not yet questions there you got it okay so we're just consolidating and the pullback so far is to the multi pivot line that ain't too exciting that means there's not a lot of people that are long he probably tried to push a little bit lower and they're just there's just no, nothing down here so why bother now he's just letting it trade because it's to his advantage anyway all anything above here means his position is going further and further in the money for him and he can start to let some go at some point but right now why push it lower it's just gonna hurt he might hurt himself he's all good somebody it may be these people it may be people that are waking up um, you know after the bowl game are starting to pick at it zoom the median line then retest okay I don't know that I like this median line but sure why not every every set of pivots will give you a median line so yeah zoom the median line now we retested now we're heading back up again sure and what what should we do we should make it to the upper parallel right I'd say we're there. And by the way, we've taken out three to the top. Let's see how our frequency's doing. Now we'll find out. Okay. Still working, but now maybe popped. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's a one bar pop. Wasn't a bad frequency, you think? In fact, I'm willing to go. Here's the same frequency. Let me throw it out there. I don't know what it's going to mean, but it worked pretty good, right? Maybe it's got another role to play. I don't know. Now remember, this is not my median line. It's not bad or good. It, and it was a good median line, just not what I used. Now, it wasn't tradable. 
but it did give us the probable path of price. I guess, I mean, there's no stop here, but, you know, it did, it did its retest. Gave us, this is the area where it should run out of energy. Did what it's supposed to do. So now we're heading lower. Or not. Or we are. Or not. And I said, okay, well, let me copy the frequency up here. Why not? So maybe it's just shifted a little bit. Finally, we start to turn down. I can see one thing I didn't do is I didn't I didn't mark in why I was marking my pivots. If you can guess where my pivots are, when you when you review the tape, I'll let you. Uh, figure that out. I'm a little rusty. My presentations are probably a little rusty right now. So we're just heading lower. Now, if this frequency is it has any meaning at all on either side, it should have some meaning down here as well. Does that make sense? Or we should just erase it. It does or it doesn't. And we test it and close back above it. Looks an awful lot like the test up here. See it? So, kind of like the frequency on both sides, actually. It looks like it's. This has turned out to be kind of a, a universal frequency, so to speak. I will, Rebecca, absolutely. That work for you? Okay. So at this point, one, two, three, I think at this point I'd probably be doing this. And I'll let you go back and see why I chose those pivots. Where's A? Where do you think A is? Significant low? Yeah. No, it's not the wash low. This is the wash low. Somebody else used that one. Nope. It's the end of the year end of the year low. Do I think it's interesting? Well, Al, I want you to move your chair back about three feet. And I want you to look at the tail. What do you think of the tail? Yeah. Now do you think it's interesting? That's what I want in my meeting line. I don't have a problem with this one either. It's just not the one I chose. The logic um, it's too it was too early for me, but this one's okay too all right and and actually you're gonna see I don't think it's gonna make that great of a difference, but yeah, this is a great center line it's blue one, so and that's what I want in a median line. So, I needed to see that there were buyers, and we had buyers take out the highs and even the frequency. Yeah, these little subtle points are worth a million bucks. They are. They come from lots and lots of practice. Um, in fact, we can even, this is our, let's just mark the, that's the high. Okay. 
Um, you want me to shift off of this? Perry? Shift the blue? Oh, off the wash? Okay. I'll do it for you, but I, you know, I don't. I don't know why you're chasing this media line, but I'll do it for you. You think that looks okay? Huh? I don't I don't follow. Okay. Your data's not as good. Well, what are you using, Perry? Oh, Trade Station. Yeah. Um, is there a reason you're using Trade Station? Okay, yeah. I I don't think there's any point anymore. If you were using Trade Station as your broker, and I wouldn't recommend it, but that was your broker, that'd be one thing. But since you're using IB, I'd go to Yeah, I'd go to I'd go to Ensign. And use and get and get e signal data. And just get rid of Trade Station. All right, so <clears throat> you got a couple a couple things going on down here. We've got you can and you can play this a couple of ways, and there's 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 plenty of money to, to play it several ways. You can play the median line, and you know the odds on the median line. You can play the frequency, which has just worked all over the place. And if you like this pumpkin colored uh, median line, you could even try and play that. There's lots of things that get in the same area. Now, it's the beginning of the year. You guys are going to hear this later on in the day. It's the beginning of the year. I'm going to fall back on my comfort food, my comfort tools. What do you think I'm going to want to use as an entry? Test and retest. And I'm probably going to use the pitchfork because I know the probabilities, right? I don't care if I'm trading on a horizontal line. I'm probably going to use a test to retest. It's got a higher probability. And I don't want to start the year out on a loser either. For me to get a test and retest, I'm also going to want some separation. None of those are separation. You could call this a test. And you could call it some separation. But, I, again, first trade of the year. Want to see some more. It's moving away nicely. How about this? I'm always mindful of, okay, well, there's buyers back in the market. That's good. Buyers back in the market, right? So now what do I want? Buyers are back in the market because we took out the high to the left. What do I want now? I want it to come back down and give me a pullback. I'm asking for a lot. I want it to come back down, and I want it to give me a test with separation 
and then I want to buy the retest. I'm looking for a lot, aren't I? I'm not shooting from the hip. I'm not chasing price. Are you saying that this activity is not the original whale buyer? No, I don't think it is. I, I, my guess is, Rebecca, he was more than willing to let him go up in here. Got 100 pips in it. This is people seeing a rounding, seeing a rounding top in their sleep. Remember, this is Geneva, right? People got long here, chased it up. This is Geneva running stops. My buddy in New York is asleep. Even he has to sleep. He's waking up right around here. Now, he trades regularly as well, but he also, of course... You know, like me, if he sees an opportunity, he'll push the market around. He only trades one market. He only trades a Canada. Period. That's why he's so tied in with the Bank of Canada. Well, he's he's the Bank of Canada's boy, even though he doesn't work for the Bank of Canada. They and he's been doing that since I since 1982, 1981 that I know of and maybe before that when Claudette says jump he says how high he, he she tells him hey a trade below 105 and a half I don't I don't want to see it and I don't want to see 108 okay talk to you tomorrow leave it on the telex and he makes it happen and in the meantime or he may say you know what she may call him up and say there's too many people speculating Take him out of this market. And so he'll make it untradeable. That's how he makes his money, Jose. And because he's in control of this market, if there's somebody that has to hedge $10 billion, who do you think they give the order to? Him, yeah. Because he's running this market. Now, even though he's in New York, he doesn't have to listen to Frank Dodd. Dodd Frank or whatever that bill is, right? He's a Canadian bank. He can do whatever the hell he wants. So he can take positions. And I know the, a lot of the European banks have agreed to do that, but not the Canadians. But they're not, you know, in general, he's an unusual Canadian. Most Canadian banks, they're not very, they're not big risk takers, but he's, he's very good. I got to figure he's about near the end of his career as well. He's probably thinking the same thing about me. He's a few years older than me, but. We're getting to be the old dogs, no doubt about it. But maybe he's having a record year, too. I don't know. So what do I need? I need a pullback. And for me to trade, I'm going to want a retest. I'm going to want a test, excuse me, of something. I'm going to want to close with separation. Then I'm going to want to retest with a stop. You think I'm asking for too much? Because I'm not, you know what, I'm I'm patient as hell at this point. I saw some other people get their ass handed to them. I'm not going to start out my year. It's still only the 5th, okay? It's, it's Monday. I'm not willing to chase on a whim. I'm in no hurry to trade. I got all year. I still got, whatever, 360 days left. I got plenty of time. So that whale is merely standing by at this point? Well, he'd be maybe, maybe making prices to some people. He, maybe he's picking a few up here. He may be doing nothing. Rebecca, he had a hell of a Thursday, Friday last week, right? He's got nothing to prove at this point. His job is never in question. And his paydays, while, while his bonuses were never on a percentage basis anywhere near mine, they don't pay that well. They were still, you know multi-million dollars every year so you know he's set for life he, you know he don't have to work for a living and you know when you think of Canada most people don't know Claudette I do he does 
Well, but they, mo but most people in the market that trade Canada know him. I, I don't know if he got completely out, but I'm saying he probably sold a lot of it. He's paid, basically, to you know control the lows and control the highs. Rebecca, he's paid to set the set the tone of the market. Literally, that's what she wants him to do. She actually gives him a band. It's called a dirty float. She gives him a band. You know, they'll get on a conference call and they'll, he'll say, uh, you know, I think it could go down to here and there. And she'll say, you know what, I don't want it to go that low. Oh, okay. Well, how uh, how how strong are you, is your opinion on that? Because I think it could get down there. Um, strong enough that I don't want to see it print there. Meaning, spend whatever you have to spend. Or she'll say, well, if it gets down there, make sure that people get hurt. In other words, close it back higher. You know, I mean, they're very good at at, at, they're much better than the Europeans on the Europeans used to have a dirty float now they don't now they just have a bad currency um, you know these they're very adept at what they do it's a different it's a different game you don't even need to know that to play Canada but um, you know they haven't changed the way they've been doing it since as long as I've been trading Canada since 1973 so they're very good no, I didn't know him that long. I wish I could understand why this manipulation happens. Um, there are people that actually think that they can tie their economic performance to what happens to their currency. I, th I think they're... My personal opinion, Jose, is that they're bureaucrats that need to make sure that they have a job. So they can explain that the reason why things are going so well is because they do such a good job manipulating their currency. I think it's hoo-ha, but that's just me. What's the name of the position of the person that tells the trader to control the tops and bottoms? What's the name of the position? Um, well, Claudette is the head of currency intervention for the Bank of Canada. She's a central banker, yes. She's my second favorite central banker. My favorite is a guy named Vinz. V-I-N-Z. And he's still around. He's just he's about he must be about eighty now. He's a central banker for Venezuela. And if there's a calling list, you know, where the central banks call each other and tell them they're going to intervene, Vince is the last guy on the list. And I'm not laughing at him because he's, he's extra polite. But you always know that something's up because Vince doesn't call that often. And when Vince calls, you know that they have something in store. Because Vince will call and say, could I get the price on three point one million dollars in the, you know, whatever, in the Australian dollar, and you just you go, what in the hell? And uh, any opinion on the new central banker in the U.S.? Uh, she, uh, she's gonna be tested. Um, I think she's better. I think she's smarter than Barney. Um, I think she's gonna be. I don't think Barney knew what to do at this point. I think he was running out of options. I think she's more likely to keep things loose. I don't know if that's good or bad. I do. I think we we are in dire risk of having deflation unless she does. So I think that's what she's thinking as well. So, but her skill set, I don't know. We'll see. Barney's was was zero or negative ten. We'll see. It'd be hard to be worse than him. Um, I don't know if you guys, I don't, I don't know how well this is publicized. I don't mean to go off on a tangent. Anybody been paying attention? Paul Volcker, uh, you know, he got married to a 28-year-old babe, right? Well, Masay, I was just going to talk about Paul Volcker. Anybody read any of the uh, recent comments by Paul Volcker in the last two weeks? All of a sudden, he woke up from the dead. Came out of the bedroom from the young lady that he married. And he, he's also, uh, he, all of a sudden, he's talking. 
He's walking and talking like a central banker. The cent the Fed is too powerful. He's in his 80s, yeah, and he's yeah, and he's uh, the uh, Obama administration administration Michelle specifically hooked him up with this young babe. Paul's Paul was spent his life taking care of his mother, and then when his mother passed away, he basically just disappeared. And uh, Michelle Obama got hooked him up. They wanted him to, you know, back the Obamas. If there are too many people trading in Canada, why would Claudette tell the trader to flush them? To get them out of the way. It's easier to manipulate a currency market when they're not standing in the way. Claudette wants the market to go where Claudette wants. She doesn't care if you're there. In fact, she'd prefer that you're not. That way it's easier to make it be where she wants. Anyway, uh, Paul's saying that the Fed's too powerful, the Fed's been given too many tools now, and that uh, if they're not careful, they're going to blow the whole system up. And the Fed is 100 this year, which is uh, ominous. And there are... You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the fascinating uh, article in the Economist. I'll see if I can get Mary to uh, link it, talking about the Fed and how it's really um, the central bank underneath the Bundestag in the uh, Germans before World War One. That's what it was. I don't know if that's true. Milton never told me that. <laughs> he doesn't, didn't like the Fed, but anyway, let's let's go back to trading. Not right, too much uh, too much uh, gossip and economics. All right, so we, when we take out the high here, there are buyers in this market. Now this is not we're buddy. My buddy's not going to be buying taking out highs. That's chasing the market. But there's some people that are aggressively buying this market. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a pullback. I'm looking for a test. I'm looking for separation after the test. Then I want to I want the market to retest whatever it I'm going to use here and I need to have a stop that I can afford. Am I asking for too much? I'm not because if I don't get it, I'm not going to trade. And again, let's talk about Really, let's think about it. Think about what we looked at on Monday. Think about what we looked at the last time we met. These filters keep you safe. That's right. The, we're not going to impulse trade. This is what we want. If we don't get it, we're not going to put our money on the line. Okay? We plan it out. We write it down. A, B, C, D. If we don't get it, we just go, okay, well, next. There'll be another trade. I don't have to jam seven trades into one day. What I need is a quality trade. One quality trade will make my month. Right? Five crappy trades means I'm gonna to have to make a quality trade to more than cover the five crappy trades. So I don't I don't I'm not interested in that. Alright, so let's see what we get. And you guys need to think that way. Dancing around, a whole lot of nothing going on. That's okay for me because this is not a sharply sloped median line, so I can afford this to take its time. Right? Now we're pulling back. Now we're through the frequency with nice separation. That that's tempting. And the frequency certainly has been kind to me. I kinda it's the first trade of the year. I kinda want to use the median line. I know the statistics of the median line. The frequency yeah, the test of the frequency, this brown, right here, Bob, right? This is the downside of the frequency. And you can see it's been tested a number of times. That's the slop in it. But I don't I, I prefer to use the median line because I can't 
quote the statistics of frequency. Yeah, it's been working real well, but I can quote the statistics on the median line. If this median line holds and we turn up, I know the statistics of here and the higher one, etc. Right? So, we'll see. See what it gives us. And, you know, with, this, with that bar, I might be thinking, well, maybe I should have played the frequency. Because I could afford this stuff. Let's, let's look at a go now go real quick. This is the maximum in the Canada. I mean, I could go to 30, but I never do. Not in 20 minutes. That's the max. Okay, so I, I could have afforded that. I've been underneath the C. I, I actually might even have been able to be underneath the A. Probably not the wash. I don't know, we'll go back and look in a minute. But, you know, at this point when this bar prints, I might have, have a, I might have had a moment of regret and thought, uh, maybe I should have been buying that bar. But we'll see. For whatever reason, I'm fixated on the lower parallel. Okay, so that's, again, beautiful separation, but it's still down here. So it's not running away. But it is beautiful separation. Still not running away. Still not running away. So we've got an energy coil going on right here. See it? Now if you're stalking along and it starts to coil down here, are you concerned? Petra says a little, and Rebecca says no, and Nick Shun says no, and BJ says no, and Bob says yes, and Susan says no. Um, well, no, we don't even have an order in yet. Nick Shun, you're jumping the jumping the boat here. Um, let, let's talk about what Andrew said. Stop and reverse, consolidation, or acceleration, okay? And he also said that a lot of times you'll get movement along a median line or a parallel and then a movement. You know, I'm sorry, you'll crawl along and then there'll be a movement, right? My studies, I think I've made this clear, my studies have shown if you get to the lower parallel or the median line or the upper parallel and you don't accelerate right away, you're either going to get congestion and or then reversal. So I don't find this troubling at all. It's okay with me. I might miss the boat because I'm not being aggressive enough, but seldom do I then get a, a you know a run lower. Because let's look at this real quick. Okay, we had a cascade lower. See it? Everybody see that? Does this look like it's part of the cascade lower? It's a different piece of structure, isn't it? I don't know that it's going to blossom into an up move, but I don't think it's a part of the cascade lower. So I've taken care of that part. So, all right, so we've got, we're just throwing another piece of logic in there. just hugging but going nowhere and as I said if this wasn't a gently sloped median line 
at this point my chances of getting long against the lower parallel probably would have disappeared but it, right now the difference between the C pivot and all the way over here is only about four pips some recent trades that you've been happy with separation and not needing the test retest can you elaborate on when it's important and not um, let me finish this one out Shane and see how much time we have and that's a that's a longer dissertation maybe well, maybe we'll come back to it so we're just uh, I, don't know how, I don't know how to draw a sloped box with that thing that's weird that's what's going on which is a whole lot of nothing buyers again or not back to the frequency line I don't mind not being long in here because really you know it's a 10 pip range and I'm not getting I'm not losing money and I'm not getting paid if I'm long right nothing's happening I got nothing that actually believe it or not is the lowest close of that entire series it doesn't feel like it because it's an upsloping coil, but that's the lowest close. Interesting, huh? If you were trading it, you w I don't think you'd feel... The longer this trade goes, the more likely your stop will not be effective. You, well, the more likely I won't be able to afford the stop, right, Jose? Okay. We test the lower parallel. This is exactly what I'm looking for. We test the lower parallel. And look where we close. So I want to get long at 106.11, which would be a retest, right? Right here. No, oh, this is not showing up. And my stop is going to be under the C pivot all the way back here. So I'm, and I don't have to use 20 pip 20 pips, but I'm going to use 20 pips. Okay? And I could go to 25, but the extra 5 pips don't buy me anything, so there's no point. Everybody with me? Questions? This fits all the criteria I was looking for. May be a loser still. I may start out the year with the loser, but it's as the, as I went through all the logic and I got to the point where I said, "Okay, I'm willing to get long." And here, you'll be able to see. See, I didn't use all the stops I could have used. That I left five pips on the table. Yeah, so patient because I only need one winner. I'm gonna keep for 2014. I'm gonna keep drilling that into you guys. Why well, have 48 trades? And you make seventeen hundred bucks when one seventeen hundred dollar trade. Well, no. How about this? When you could make one trade for seventeen hundred dollars and then stop for the month and say, "Okay, I'm done," then you were totally efficient. And actually, be adult enough and willing enough to do that and say, "You know what? That's more than enough money for me for the month. I'm done. Thank you." All right, so beautiful separation and our test. I wanted to play the median line this time around because I know the statistics better. If we're going to get long, we got a little time. Um, what, what do we think about uh, targets? We're only using a 20 pip stop, so we got, you know, clear air to the previous high 
Okay. So, Shane, do you think just the previous high, or do you mean if we get above it? what? Can you draw the height of profits? Well, I'm asking you ideas. Then I'll draw them. The big one, that was mine. Well, you mean you looked far to the left, Shane? Or at least previous high trail stops just could explode up. Yeah, we could do that. Break even and halfway, then go for top of Pittsburgh. Nothing wrong with that. First option will be the frequently repeated uh, earlier. Okay, and no, I, I did a modified shift for the big wash as an A and B. Okay, all right. Well, let's just take a look. I, I, I got a couple options here. A couple ideas for you. I could do uh, we could actually probably we'll, we'll we'll investigate this in a minute we could probably just do this but I I don't I don't know that I'd bother to trade if that's all I thought was in this thing but that we could do the uh, upper parallel at 107 we could do the frequency, which is almost the same. Got any other ideas? <coughs> How about that? I mean, look, it's now it's the first big month week of the month of the month of the year as well. Now we got everybody back in full strength. Now we got a lot of people that want to trade. Okay, if this thing starts to go up, we might have a lot of people chasing this thing, and we might actually get a heck of a run, which would lead us to think about what about doubling the range. So how do we double the range? Well, it's a couple ways, but the easiest way would be here's our low, here's our high, double the range. There's a warning line. How about that? There's another one. And or just trail stops. All possibilities, right? Any other ideas or you we have we covered all the Okay, I'm going to take out, yeah, I'm going to take this out. There we go. Let's see what we get. So I want to get long. I don't know why this is up here. I want to get long at 106.11. Stop 20 pips below. Would you have more than one in... What do you mean, Nixon? You mean would I scale out? Uh, the only time I would have multiple plans would be this. I'm looking for X, but I'm but that's a long ways away, so I'm going to. Uh, protect my profits with profit target profit stops underneath now if the logic of the move changes then I'll I'll, I'll go back in and surgically and logically change the target but unless the logic changes I'm going to leave it in place I'm not going to play with it because it's a, we talked about it, it's a slippery slope. Once you start to change stuff, then you're always jiggling around with stuff, and pretty soon your trading turns to mush. So let's see what's, let's see what's going on. So my, my target is double the range and trail stops. Because I'm thinking 
first week back a lot of people if it goes up people are starting to get frisky here the only reason I'm worried about trailing stops is in case my buddy in New York and Claudette decide that they don't want it to go that high. So I do get filled. That's good. Now, we need to take some highs out. We need to not get stopped out. Double bottoms. Closing on the high. Looks good. Another new high. Looks good. You guys all here? You asleep? What's going on? I know I had, Al had to leave for a meeting. I think uh, John was having internet connections. Okay. New high. Same close, basically. New high and new high close for the move. Inside bar. Pulling back. Okay, we expect that. We don't want it to pull back too far, but I'm going to be slow to move my to go to break even. I needed to take out some highs to do that. Coming right back down. Okay, that's better. That's better. That's actually the new high close. That's a new high and a new close. And Taking something, taking a high out, and there, well, maybe not. We'll not call it, but now we can say we took a high out. Now, let's see, even if we had just done the median line, let's say you weren't that aggressive. I got you. Hang on, B. Hang on. We know we're risking 20, so I can always. Initially, you're risking 20 to make 46, so if that didn't work, does it work now? It still doesn't work. Okay. So we are we have doubled what we were risking. Big Shot wants to go to break even. Okay, fine. Anybody else? Break even, Jose says. Anybody else? We good? Don't know. Don't like this trade. Who doesn't like this trade? At the median line, love, but that was just a bit too cheap. What was? Too cheap. Oh, you 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 try to be cheap on your entry. Cheap stops and cheap entries are cost you more money than anything else in the market chain. So. Also, you had the you had the wrong meeting line, right? That just happens. If you grab the wrong meeting line, yeah, well, there'll be another trade. First close above the median line, second close above the median. I watched it on hourlies and it entry just after yours. Oh, okay. Did you get in? Don't know what the hours hourly look like, so mirror bars after we get above the median line. Median lines holding, median lines holding, median lines holding, median lines holding. Something like a broken record here. Still holding, still holding. Trying to pull back now, or, or maybe we're holding. I don't know. Yep, we're pulling back. All right. 
The good news is, because we've got a slope, we can pull back and survive. I haven't moved yet. If we survive and take out the high, I'll change my stop. Pull them back. Can you see the volatility collapse? <coughs> so we ran out of sellers. And if we're long now, time is on our side. The longer it takes, the more money we're going to make, right? All we have to do is be patient. We don't have to sit here and watch it. They're 20-minute bars. We don't have to sit here and watch every 20-minute bar. We got our stop in. We can come back every once in a while and look at it and say, okay, if this happens, then I'll do this. And then go away. Because you already got your stop in. Stop back in and look at it again later on, right? Nice low volatility meanders right on up. Yeah, this is, these are the, you know, these are the trades that are hard to find. I know it drives a lot of people crazy, but Rebecca knows after you've done it for a while, these are the trades you really want, isn't it, Rebecca? Either this or get, give me my profit or my loss the next bar. Otherwise, just, you know, no fuss, no muss. Call me when I'm, call me when I got my profit, right? Stop me out at the next bar or give me my profit at the next bar. Or go ahead and meander because I'm getting paid for every bar. I get an extra pip every five box or bars or so. At the median line. Now I'd say we've, rec we've recovered the median line. Meandering prices counterintuitive but it's what you want that's right so much of trading is counterintuitive it's um uh, you know I used to play chess when I was young and I was okay at it but when my son started to play chess and I actually had to study it so that he didn't beat me to death Um, being good chess, being a really top end chess player is counterintuitive. You have to give things up to get what you want. You know, you have to give up pieces to get the other person in a position where they're actually weaker, even though you gave up pieces. Sitting through this meandering is counterintuitive. You you want, like most people in the world these days, you want instant gratification. But it actually, you get paid more. And if it doesn't damage your position, every time it meanders and doesn't take you out, your position gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Now we're making new highs. So... I got one close. I got one more close. Get up there. Take that high out. We're back. Oh, there we go. One, two. One more, please. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go. Let's take a look at risk. I was going to go to break even if it took this out right here. right but now I'm just gonna skip break even I can get this right I think I screwed it up oh it's maybe it's it's rec it's not recoverable and how we Merry Christmas, Howard.
10 pips. So, now this is just me. You can do whatever you want to do. This is how I'm going to box in profits. Boy, I know it. I know it seems slow, but I, you know, I don't want this pullback to shag me out. If we get another one of those pullbacks, I don't want to get shagged out right here. I want to be nice and slow. In most situations, I'd just be going to break even right now, but we've had so much of a slow, steady excursion. I'm going to skip it and go. under this I think this this move is so gentle and so what you guys like it's putting you guys to sleep new highs staying above the median line running away now okay we're through the median line so now, now it's important for us to have the uh, first warning line in there. Uh, where are you? Yep, I guess that's it. There's our first warning line. When you ask if we're awake, I wonder what questions we should be asking. Nah, there's just no comments. I just want... I, it's okay, Miss Sale. I, I don't know that you're missing anything. I'm up here now. I think I can go here. It's not much. It's 40 pips. And certainly even a lot of the table. But I want the, you know, it's first trade of the year. I've got a nice runner going here. I, I want to see if I can milk it, right? Even if I end up with a winner, it'll be fine. But maybe I'm going to be able to milk this for a nice big fat win. We're already above 107. And you know, if you just chose to take your profits here, you're doing great. Or here. We zoom the upper parallel. Let me not be, I'll not be lazy, which is. I'm trying, but it's begin. It's the beginning of the year. <clears throat> we zoom. And now, we retest. Works like a charm, doesn't it? That Andrew, that Andrew's guy was smart, wasn't he? Okay, now we're at... You can do a couple things here. We're at the confluence of the first warning line and our frequency. You can take profits at uh, 10. Oh, you know, there, it's not a week unless I do that, is it? 
I think if I had one thing to ask Howard, if I had one wish, it would be to make that go away. It doesn't cause any harm, it's just annoying. You take your profits at uh, 107.77, nothing wrong with that, right? Jose says out. You could also, if you don't want to play that game, <coughs> get slightly more aggressive with your profit stops. And you'd be locked in at 100 pips. BJ, you're out, or you, or you just put your stop here and let it run? Okay. Got it. Because we have no idea where this thing's going. It's the first trade of the year, right? These people, God knows where they're going. You get much of an excursion up here, you can go even closer. Let's see if we take out that high right there. Why not? Trying to get back below the first warning line. There's your test. Let's fix that real fast. Nope, wrong one. putting them in why not all right uh, where are we every test deserves a retest New highs, kinda, not really. Okay, new highs, not really. There we go. Gotta be underneath here probably, right? So now, I mean, you could take your profit here, or now you've just put your profit stop right here, and if it keeps going, how about that? I mean, you can look at this as a lotto now. Who knows where this is going to go? Think how hard it would be to get long in here. You're long at the bottom. You see it? Nothing wrong with taking your profit here. Nothing wrong with taking your profit at the upper parallel. Nothing wrong with letting it run. Choose your poison. It's all good. Now we're at the whatever. Well, this is the second warning line, third warning line, whatever. I think it's the th second warning line. Middle of the night's Geneva shag. And they're shagging.
Okay. Yahoo, huh? I don't know. Is this is this too aggressive, BJ? I mean, there's so many ways you could play this, guys. This is just the box, right? So many ways you could play this. That's live. Yeah, so you've turned a 107.05. Yeah, so you still have more profit now even if you do get stopped out here. You turned a 107.05 profit target into a profit stop of 108.10. How about that? What do you think of that? Is that too squeezed in? Yeah, I, you know, I had bacon for breakfast. I don't know where it'll stop, but let it swing, right? The more the merrier. Um, it's okay with me if it's okay with Claudette. Do anything in particular make you think this would be a runner? Um, yeah. I already said it, Matthew. It's the beginning of the year. It's the first full week of the year. Everybody wants to get a trade, and the trend is going up. If the Bank of Canada doesn't step in, why stop them? Let them go. Like I said, if you if you want, you can just take your profit. You can't take your profit here. It doesn't work. But you can take your profit here. There's nothing wrong with that. And that was a nice... Well, let's just look at it real quick. There you go. That was 6 to 1. Like Shane's flung trade. Uh... No, Shane's flung trade is like this. Wish I could draw. That's not what's going on here. This is the opposite, which is we basically started out here. <coughs> and now it's like the... <coughs> Excuse me. It's like the opposite of the flung trade. See how it started out gentle and now it's accelerating? <coughs> Excuse me. As more and more people get it, including the corporations of the world, this is the surprise side of Canada. Remember, we went through this in Aussie last year. Remember that? Aussie weekend? This is like the Aussie side of Canada. All of a sudden, Canada's weakening. I, you know, I, and, and I'm, I, don't, I don't care about the fundamentals, but, you know, the strong currencies all of a sudden are, they're losing their uh, backers, I guess. I don't know. Doesn't matter, but I, how far can this go? I don't know. Maybe that was it, but in which case we'll get stopped out. But uh, worst that happens is we got 200 pips in it. It's nice to... Two thousand dollars. To be looking at three drives up here now, yes. We, the three drives we want to be look. That wants to set the tone for the entries. Up in here now, we don't. Uh, unless you're looking to get short, but if you're looking to get short, then basically what we want is three drives to the bottom with three drives to the top, and we want the third drive to the bottom to get taken out. So, I get your. Okay, hang on. This is a long one. Who's this? Math. Okay. I get your logic throughout all this presentation, but I'm not sure how to think that way. You have years of experience. Well, okay. You have years of experience being on the floor. Well, no, I actually don't have years of experience being on the floor. 
I'd say my total length of time on the floor is probably a year and a half. I've owned a seat forever, but standing on the floor is just too much work. A lot, a lot of room, a lot of in trading room, sure. Not sure how to get to the point of view without all the experience. Well, Matthew, um, you can't do it in a week. You can't do it in a month. But um, I got BJ and Pat right here. BJ and Pat, can you get it in a couple years? By looking through my eyes and paying attention to, you know, the you know the subtleties that we throw out here because I like I said and I know I don't think you guys were there for the midday session yesterday but I I, I uh, so maybe I talked out of turn you know when I first met you guys you were scuffling you know you weren't banging out money and then you went through a period where you learned to become break even then consistently profitable and now you're you know you're ready for prime time. You know, if there were people handing out money right now, I'd tell you to get an 18-month track record and go out and become a, a hedge fund manager or a CTA. That's where you're going. Or just keep managing your own money, which is even smarter between you and I. Managing money for people sucks. But, you know, it doesn't take 40 years. It really doesn't, Matthew. What it takes is um, if you can find somebody that's willing to share their experience with you it, it didn't take me 40 years what it took me is some experience with Amos and some experience with Dr. Andrews and some experience with Boom Boom and by, by the time I was done with Boom Boom I was one of the biggest traders in the in the world and that wasn't 40 years and I was only 27 years old at that point would you have hate yourself in a year after me then you then you would hate yourself in a year after ma managing money for other people. Uh, BJ, it's awful. I'm going to just tell you. I mean, I, I'm lucky. I have, um, well, I'm back, to, I'm back to having four people. I was down to just the queen. Now I'm back to four people again. But, you know, it's the people I know. Michael, I've known Michael Dell since college. And Steve Jobs, it's a foundation. Steve's passed away. So there's not going to be any problem there. I have power of attorney. Um you know, and the the Queen and I, so far at least, and it's been a long relationship. Um, you know, I've known her since 1991. So that's a pretty long relationship. Um, my my two really close friends from Saudi Arabia, and my third friend from Kuwait um, that went to school with me. From, that I started managing money with in 1985, I no longer manage money for them because I think there's going to be a problem between America and the Middle East, and I just can't be on that side. I can't be, I won't be. So we've parted ways. Well, we parted ways happily. I mean, couldn't be a better year for them to, to you know, to cash out. But um, the Queen picked up the slack, Michael Dell picked up the slap, and the Steve Foundation, uh, Steve Jobs Foundation, just happened to be at the right place for me at the right time. So, um, those are people that are not going to bother me. But unfortunately, when you first start managing money, you have to deal with, uh, they're just, they're vultures, BJ. is awful. Yeah, it's just, you, and you have enough money. Stay with your own money. Build your account. Yeah, you, you know, you don't want the phone calls. And you, the other thing you don't want, you don't want the people that are going to sell you. You know, they make up a story about you, and they sell you, and they push you, and you have to do interviews with investors, and it's just awful. It's real, you know, it's the, it's the smarmy side of trading. You don't want to have anything to do with it if you don't have to. I went through it. Stanley Druckenmuller went through it. You all know who Stanley Druckenmuller is? Yeah, they call up big investors, and they say, you know, a guy that, you know, has $50, $100 million, and they say, this guy is the real deal. Oh, yeah? You say that to me all the time. Well, why don't you talk to him? He's got a lot of experience. been with the Commodities Corporation. And so you get a call from some guy, and he's, you know, probably got money with 50 people. And, uh, you know, he asks you questions and, um, you know, putting the sizzle on the steak. There you go. And, um, you know, I, I went to one interview, and Stanley was in the waiting room. And when I walked in and saw Stanley, we both started laughing. That was 1985. We bu we busted out laughing. It was a couple from Ohio that was going to, they were looking to invest a million dollars in 
in each of us. And uh, I would have thought that that's a good thing. No, it's a pain in the ass, Jose, because they lie, cheat, and steal to make you look good. They don't want to tell the truth. The truth's not good enough. And I don't, I don't want any part of that. I never did, and I never played along. And, uh, you know, Stanley did it for a year and then just said the hell with it and took the job with George Soros, which I, that wasn't that good either. Um, and he finally just quit. But he quit a rich man. But R George took a good 10 years out of his life, I guarantee you, out of his hide. But um, it's, it, it's, you know what, I have... Jose, the problem is I have real morals. So I fire brokers. I fire people that are trying to sell me. Um, the one reason why market geometry isn't better known and bigger is because I refuse to let those people sell us. There's a lot of people that want to sell us, but I don't want anything to do with them because it's smarmy, it's cheap, I don't. it's tawdry. There's a word you don't hear every day. I don't want anything to do with it. All we want to try to do is help people out here, you know, educate people. I, I, I'm, I don't want to be TradeTheMarkets.com. I just don't. So, is Jobs Window separate from the foundation? Yes. Well, they're actually not married. They would be common law married. But um, I, I knew him long before her, probably four times longer than her. But, uh, yeah, they, she has nothing to do with it. She gets a... Uh, she gets a check every year, which has nothing to do with me. Only thing, only issue I had with her is once he died, um, he had a lot of money in different charities. She basically just, not only did she pull the pull the legs out of all the charities, but she refused to actually pay the money that these charities owned, owed. Like you know, we uh, you know, the 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 kids foundation, the fifth graders. Um, she refused to pay the last check to the school systems, 39 school systems. I mean, that's just, what's up with that? It's not even her money. I was on the portfolio management team for an institution last year, and it was almost all selling. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't like that stuff. So anyway, so yeah, BJ, you got it. Just trade your own money be happy. And you know, you're good enough that you can, I don't care how much money you have, you can quintuple it in four years. So don't worry about it. You'll be fine. So anyway, We'll see how this trade uh, swings. Worst that happens is $2,000 per $100,000. That's not bad for a first trade. And again, key, patience. Wait until you see what you like. Um, I got a little bit of logic, and then I really wanted to see some pain. I got that pain, that good old-fashioned pain. Then I asked for a lot. I asked for some new buyers. Then I asked for a pullback. I asked for a test with separation, and then I asked for a retest with a good stop, and I got it all. And if I hadn't got it, I wouldn't have traded. That's the laying out the logic is helpful. Okay, good. But the other key, though, is, well, you get you can watch it, Jose. You get, to, you get to watch this. I'll be putting it up. But, yeah, I mean, the key really is slow down and don't trade till you get what you want. It's okay. Cuz it, let me just ask you a question. How, how many of you this is so this is per contract. How many of you would like to just net make $2,000 a contract in a month? On average. So does it have to be 45 trades? Isn't it better if it's one? Or three, not 45 or 148. Less stress, it's efficient. You can sleep at night. I know people want activity, but this is the kind of activity I want. This is my P and L curve going up. So, yeah, this was this is un unusually good, and uh, boy, for beginning trade of the year, it was very nice. But you know, this is what you're looking for. So the challenge is finding the one and being able to catch it. Well, Perry, the other challenge is, is if you miss the one, it's being patient because there will be another one. 
and not being frustrated to the point where you're, you know, angry at yourself and, you know, then your revenge trade and all those other things. Because right after this trade, there'll be another trade. All you have to do is just relax and wait for it. There's always another wave. So the surfers always say, you know what, if I don't get this wave, I'll get the next one. Same thing here. There's always another trade. All you got to do is relax until you find the one that you want. And if you don't catch it, there'll be another one. It's okay. Shane, when you didn't get filled down here because you were in the 60 minutes and you were using a modified shift, did you blow your head out with a, with a gun? There'll be another trade, right? Just relax. There you go. I was happy with reading it 95% correct. I, you know what? Too few people take that solace in that, you know what? The logic worked for me. The market did what I thought. I didn't get filled. That's okay. Next time I will. It's okay. 5% for the entry would have made a great month. Yeah. But month ain't over yet, is it, Shane? So, you know, you should feel like, hey, you know what? I'm running on eight cylinders. I just didn't get filled. That's okay. I'll get filled. I'll be patient. I'm not going to revenge trade. That next that next one will come along. I'll be using the same logic. And, and one of these, I'll get filled, and it'll be fine. Just got to slow down and relax. Don't worry about it. So, okay, I'm going to go uh, do some voice stuff, uh, you know, take, you know, do some stuff for my lungs. Chan was watching the same trade on 15 minutes, so maybe I have to go down a time frame. Did Chan catch it? No. Well, I think beauty's in the eye of the beholder, Shane. I think sometimes you catch them and sometimes you don't. I think you think you, you should find your time frame. It's if it's 60 minutes, don't worry about it. You had the 95% of the trade, and you'll you'll catch one. Don't worry about it. I I wouldn't chase time frames either. So, anyway, um, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go do some uh, do some medicine for my lungs so I can talk at IB because that's always a talk fest. And uh, for those of you who are going, I'll see you in about an hour and 15 minutes. Otherwise, hope uh, hopefully that was it. This was the interesting first trade of the year. And um, thanks. And uh, we will see you either later today or I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody take care. Happy breakfast. See you soon.